Good, good. Well, uh, like Scott said, I think this is just a big opportunity. Um, one, for us being here, um, big opportunity for us, but then for you guys, too, to um, get this knowledge. You know, not a lot of people get this knowledge, especially, um, you know, at your age and in, in uh, college. So, um, thanks for coming today. Um, like Scott said, my name is Riker Erickson. Um, here along with my two co-workers, Susan Forberry and Carrie Boris over there, snapping pictures. Um, so, we're basically here to, today, guys, to discuss um, budgeting, credit, and fraud. Real simple. Um, basically, how, how you guys can be the most successful with the money that you make. Um, so, with that being said, I want to see a show of hands of who is just a member of a credit union. It doesn't have to be UW Credit Union, just a credit union. Cool, cool. So, keep your hands up if you're a member of UW Credit Union. Awesome. So, what you guys may or may not know that I'm going to share to the crowd is that you know, our mission statement as a company is to improve the financial well-being of people. You know, and, and you look at financials and stuff, and it's not always like that. So, with us, the credit union, we're, we're out for your best interest. All right? Um, so, and like Scott said, I was a former athlete here at uh, Madison College. I played basketball. I was on the men's basketball team from 04 through 06. Played two full seasons. Scott Besser was my coach. Um, so men's guys, you, got, you guys got a great coach there. Um, we had a lot of success that year. I won't get into much of it. Uh, two years, 40, 49 and uh, 18. So we had some success. 2006, we won a state, uh, state championship. Uh, from there, I graduated with an associate's degree in criminal justice. Um, and then, so currently, I've been with the credit union for two and a half years. I've been in the building, working here for about a year and a half. I absolutely love it. I love teaching, I love passing knowledge on um, to others. And then I still carry my basketball passion. Um, I'm a, the JV head coach at Monona Grove High School. Um, so I still do that. And uh, just before Susan gets rolling, I just want to say, you know, really pay attention to this stuff because it's gonna affect you whether it's today, tomorrow, next week, next year, 10 years from now. Um, eventually, you guys will graduate, have careers, jobs, you know, get married, whatever it is, uh, goals of uh, getting a mortgage, a house, car, so it, it will have effect on you now or later. Um, so with that being said, um, turn it over here to Susan and we'll get rolling. Thanks, Gregor. So, um, can everybody hear me? Uh, I'm known professionally as a loudmouth, so you should be able to hear me just fine, okay? Uh, yeah, I see some familiar people. They're like, yeah, I'm loving them too. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Yay, I have some friends. So, uh, you guys, thanks so much for coming again. Uh, there's a couple of things we want to talk about. Our main focus today is going to be on uh, creating a budget. So exciting. But it'll be great. Uh, we're also going to talk about credit history and what that means, what that's made up of. And we're also going to talk about identity theft, how to protect what you've got. You got a little bit, you got a lot, you got to protect it all. <laughs> oh, so I'm going to use the microphone now. <laughs> you can't watch it online. You can't oh, okay, all right. So the loud mouth won't work, right? <laughs> okay. So, um, so these are the three things that we want to talk to you about. Um, one thing that we won't cover tonight is going to be student aid, so uh, financial aid, okay? However, you're not, you're not left out in the cold. We're actually going to uh, give a seminar on the 31st. I believe that's a Thursday. Is that right, Riker? Thursday? So the 31st, last day of the month, um, we're going to be giving a seminar um, between 5, excuse me, like 5.30 and 7. We're going to talk about how to apply, talk about FASFA, talk about Stafford, talk about Perkins, talk about all those different types of student aid. So please join us. Come by the credit union, we can give you some information. Also, ask your instructors because they know about this seminar. So, if you have questions about student loans, uh, great questions, how do you get grants, how to get the money, bring you, bring your friends, bring your parents, um, and we'd, be, we'd love to talk to you about that stuff as well, okay? So, we handed out a handout. It uh, looks a little bit like this. It says, Keys to Financial Success in College. Uh, the Wolfpack Edition. This isn't just for college students. This is actually the same seminar, really, um, that we give to everyone. Uh, everyone has these questions, okay? So it's not just students. Everyone has these questions, so that's why 
uh, we find that this is really, really important to your success. Um, in this packet, do me a favor. This isn't Dead Poet Society, but rip off the last page. So if you rip off the very last page, this is an evaluation. This tells my boss that I was not playing hooky tonight. So what this is, is this tells you, this tells us actually how you felt about this seminar, and it gives us some feedback. Um, so you do not have to put your contact information on this if you don't need it. If you don't need to call us, if you don't need us to call you, you don't need to give us your information. But if you do want us to call you, if you do say, you know what, I need help with this, I have some questions, please put your information on here and call us. Otherwise, we're just going to collect these at the end of the night um, so we can basically keep track of who came here tonight. Um, so that would be really helpful. And if I forget to ask you, can somebody tell me, hey, you forgot to ask us to fill these out. I appreciate your help with that. So, let's start out with budgeting. Everybody hates the word budgeting. It's terrible, it's awful, it's boring, but it's necessary. And the reason why it's necessary is you have to figure out what's coming in and what's going out and balance that. At this point in your lives, no one's going to do that for you. If someone's doing it for you, that's awesome. Keep that person in your life forever. Or you need to learn to make a budget yourself. You need to have a spending plan. And that's what we call it, a spending plan, which is a roadmap for your money. Okay? It says where your money is going to go. All right? So it talks about, you know, it, it gives you a place. So it tells you, hey, I've got to pay this. I've got to pay that. I've got to pay that down the road. So you need to think about now what you're going to have to pay, about, pay on later. Okay? So it helps you track. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to track our spending and create a plan. And then we're going to review it and change it if we need to, if it's not working for you. How many have a uh, spending plan? How many have a budget? Okay. <laughs> so a few of you have a budget. Who can help me with that? What, um, who is, who, can you stand up in the back there? <laughs> What's your name? Xavier. Xavier. Thank you so much. How do you budget your money?
So that's what we want you to do. It gives you a sense of personal accomplishment. Hey, I saved for this. You know, Riker, we were talking to Riker today. He has something that he's been saving for. He has a sense of personal accomplishment. Tell him about that, So, Riker. pretty much since right after high school, or, you know, early college career, I, uh, I had a plan that was to start saving for a house. Uh, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I just wanted to start saving for a house. So every paycheck, I was just 5 bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks. Well, last week, I just got pre-approved for a mortgage to buy a house. And I will be using that money that I was saving to put down for a down payment. So, you know, it, it short, long-term goals is just having a plan. Having a plan. Absolutely. So, um, let's look at what we need. So we have to analyze income and expenses, okay? That's the first part of it, okay? Income. We have different types of income. You have your jobs, right? That's kind of a no-brainer. Jobs, right? you got to count that money coming in. Anything you've saved. Financial aid, that's money coming to you. Um, gifts, you get Christmas gifts, you get birthday gifts, that's money. That counts. What other income is there? Can somebody help me out? No other income at all? What are we getting ready to do here in January, February? Taxes. Taxes. Income. Absolutely. So all that's income. We've got to count all of that. Now we've got to figure out where it goes. Okay? Expenses. What do you pay for? Tuition? Pay for housing? Food, maybe? We got some closing. What other expenses do we have? No other expenses. What is it? Entertainment. Entertainment, of course. Movies, going out, going out to eat, those sorts of things. So we got to figure out how much are we going to do that? Are we going to take our financial aid check and just go out to eat? A lot? No. You got to actually budget to where this is going. Okay? <laughs> So now we know how much is coming in. Now we figure out, we're like, okay, this is what I think. So you take this sheet and you say, you know, this is how much my rent is. This is how much my electricity is. This is how much my cell phone costs. So you take a look at that. You know that. But that's not everything in it. Because what do we talk about? Eating out, right? Going out to eat. Anybody go out to eat? Okay. What about between practices? When you're done with school, do you have time to go and eat something? Do you have time to brown bag it? Do you guys usually get something from the cafeteria? You know? What else? Do they bring, do they bring food every time? Is it to practices? Do they do this every practice? Do they bring food to you? No. So you've got to plan for that. So you know that that's an expense. And that's something that you have to track. Can somebody tell me how much they spend on eating out? Anybody? Any volunteers? I'm not going to pick on Xavier. He already helped me. How much? Anybody? Do you know? You don't know. So how do you know? How do you figure that out? You gotta track it. You gotta figure out. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. You can keep your receipts. You can look online. There's a couple of ways that you can do it on a lot of financial institutions, including UW Credit Union. I'm gonna speak about UW Credit Union because that's where I work. A lot of institutions have ways you can track it. They have reports that you can pull. So that's another thing that you can do, okay? So once you track it, once you write it down, you track it, you have to compare that to what you thought you were going to spend. Okay? I can say I spend $200 eating out every month. But I don't know until I keep my receipts, until I look at my, in my checking account history. I don't know what that really is. And if that's not what I'm spending, I need to fix it. I need to change it. How much do you spend, Riker, eating out? Varies. Varies, yeah. Uh-huh. Are you within your budget? Oh, yeah. You're ready to Okay. All right. Now let's track it. So you're tracking and you're analyzing, okay? So now that you've tracked the money, now that you've tracked what you spent, you have to make sure that that's that clear. Okay, I said that I spent $200 a month, but when I added it all up, when I added everything up, I spent $400 a month. What happens when I keep spending more than I actually budget for? What happens? What happens? I think I'm broke, right? I'm calling mom for money, right? But still think about that. Revise your plan. So now I either need to A, stop eating out, right? Or B, stay within my budget. Stay within what I said I would do. Okay? There's some tools for that. There's some things we can do. So if it's not what you're, if it's not what you planned on, if it's not your spending plan, 
You need to correct it. You need to fix it. And then go back and say, okay, I'm going to eat out a little bit less. I'm going to eat at my friend's house. I'm going to come to a seminar so I can get pizza. Stuff like that, right? So, speaking of, who are these ugly guys over here? So that, that's a picture of uh, our 2006 state championship. Part of our guys right there with this little trophy. And... Yeah. So, um, how, so this is state championship? Yeah. How'd you get there? You know, um, a lot of those um, words right there. I mean, we, we basically came together. To, you, first of all, you, you come up with a goal for yourself. And uh, short term, long term. And then, you know, you make them realistic. Uh, and then once you do that, you know, you put a plan in a place, and you follow that plan every day. Every day. Right. So there's a discipline and that's to not it. easy. No. It's, de it's definitely not easy. You know, you guys know that, you know, being athletes, that it is not easy, you know, during the season making a plan, and, and things are going to go bad, and that's just life. But, you know, over time, if you do stick with it, you know, you get Absolutely. You can't give up, right? You lose a game, or you overspend. This is all tied in together. This is, this is life stuff. And what you learn in your athletics, what you learn with your team, you can carry on that, carry that into your financial well-being. And so what we ask is that you set some smart goals. Okay? So when you want to buy something, you're setting some smart goals. Um, it's not because they're brilliant. They are brilliant. But that's not what it means. The packet, the, the piece of paper behind your monthly spending plan. This is some information about setting your SMART goals, all right? What we call about is specific. So we don't just say, I'm going to save $1,200 this year. It's not a SMART goal. We say, I'm going to save $1,200 this year by specifically taking $100 out of each month and putting it into my savings account. It's measurable. It's $100. I know exactly how much I'm going to take out. It's $25 bucks a week. It's action-oriented because I'm not going to buy, I'm not going to go out, I'm not going to eat as much because I'm actually taking that money and putting it into my savings account. It's realistic because I can afford it. If $100 is not realistic, change that goal. Time-oriented. I know it's going to happen in a year. Does everybody get that? Everybody understand that? So, when you were saving for your house, did you have these smart goals? You put some money down for down payment? It's ups and downs, but, you know, again, sticking to that plan, you know, creating that plan and Sticking to it. So Riker's house. We have a couple of different types of goals, right? We have short term, medium term, and long term goals. Alright? We think that short term goals are within a year. If you want to buy uh, you want to buy a bike, okay? That's usually within a year. You can probably handle that within a year. Medium term goals. We think that's between one and five years. Long term? is five years or more. What kind of goal is, is Riker's house? Long term. Right. Can someone give me an example of a medium term goal? Any example? Car. Car. Perfect. We, we pay those off within three to five years, right? So those are the type of goals that you want to set. You want to put some money aside. Now I'm not saying that you need to save for the entire car. Most people get car loans for that. But it's good to have a down payment. It's good to start off with something to put down. So you have that. So you own part of that car already. So you're halfway there. You don't have to get as much money. Make sense? All right. So there's a couple of different types of budgeting and tracking tools um, so that you don't end up uh, exceeding your budget. We've already mentioned a couple. We've mentioned going online. There's all kinds of online tools. Your financial institution. The place where you bank often gives you those tools, often gives you that. You can have that, okay? At your financial institution, you should probably be able to go and go online. They should have those tools online to where you can look at. UW Credit Union does. I know other credit unions do. Um, Word, Excel, this kind. Of, most people don't really like to deal with paper, but like to go online. Has anyone heard of Mint.com? Right. So that's a tracking tool, all right? Quicken. Money, you guys have heard of these things? These are free, available to you online. They'll help you track, They'll help you track your spending. Um, a personal spending plan, you want to get that. That's what this is. That's what yours is. And it doesn't, mine doesn't look like this. Mine's my own, because every year I'm redoing it. I have to redo it every year because my expenses change. What's happened to gas prices in the last year? <coughs> Anybody buy, buy gas at all? 
What's happened? What? Shooting up and down. Mainly up, right? So I can't get a gallon of gas this year for what I got it for last year. And I need to know that. I need to, I need to make room for that. All right? So there's a bunch of different types. Riker has a couple of different checking accounts, right? So you can have a couple of different checking accounts, a couple of different savings accounts where you put money. You say, you know, I like shoes. I like to buy shoes. I don't know why. I just do. So I have a savings account for shoes because I don't know when I'm going to buy them, but I know there's going to be a sell at DSW and I'm going to buy them. I can tell you that right now. So I have a spending plan for that. I have a savings plan for that. You can do that too, all right? Just a quick example. If you guys will look up here. Quick example of, uh, and I know this is small, and it's even smaller on your worksheets. This is an example of what you see at UW Credit Union. So all those folks at UW Credit Union, this is what they get to see. So what you see is you've got um, everything, every time you swipe your debit card, it shows up in your history. So this is actually an example of history, a checking account history. And so I can name, I can categorize my spending. So it's already out there. I don't have to write anything down. All I have to do is select a drop-down box. Okay. So in the category area, I can select a drop-down box. And I can call it gas, shoes, food, eating out, entertainment. And I can make my own categories. Okay, that's great. What do I do with that? So I can click on a button, and it tells me exactly how much I spent where. So when I'm talking about tracking and analyzing, what happens is I take all that information that I've put in there and I've made a chart. It made a chart for me, actually. I didn't make the chart. There's some classes, by the way, that you guys have to make a budget. There it is. It actually gets it to you right there. I know there are some finance classes out there that you guys have to make budgets. This will do it for you. So you actually have. So if I double click on how much I ate food and dining, or $293 I spent on food and dining. If I double-click it, I can tell exactly how, where I spent the money. If that's in my budget or not in my budget. Next month, maybe I need to spend $100 less. So this is how you can track it. And this is what's offered at UW Credit Union. I'm sure it's offered at other credit unions and other financial institutions. Utilize that. Or play with it, at least, right? Anybody have any questions about spending plans, tracking, budgeting? Questions? All right, we're going to move on. I need another volunteer. Anybody? Is this on? So I need a volunteer, please. Somebody stand up. I give you something if you stand up. Thank you. What's your name, sir? Adrian? Aiden. Aiden. Thanks, Aiden. Come see me afterwards, okay? All right. So does having a cell phone in your name help build positive credit history? Sure. You're wrong. Sit down. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you guys are a tough crowd. Loosen up. This is fun. Okay. Um, so these questions are actually designed. Uh, to sort of lean one way or the other. So actually, having a cell phone in your name does not build positive credit history. However, if you miss a payment on your cell phone, it will develop poor credit history for you. Did you know that? How many knew that? Everybody knew that? All right. We do now. So you have to owe money. You have to actually have something in your name in order to build credit history. So paying, so people come in, I say, hey, have you built some credit history? They say, yeah. I got a cell phone. I pay rent. I pay MG&E. I pay everything. I pay everything right out of my pocketbook. I have plenty of credit. The fact of the matter is, you don't. You have to have a credit card or some kind of line of credit. Most of the time, most financials have overdraft protection. We have one at the credit union. You've got one at your bank, too. Those things, those credit cards, the ability to charge that money, that will build credit history. Now, do you have to, do you have to use the credit cards? Who says yes? Everybody's scared. Who says no? The no's have it. And they're right. You don't have to actually charge money to develop credit history. You just have to have the card. I have people that come in my office, I open up a credit card for them, and we cut it up right there and then. 
we're going to make credit history for them. So keep that in mind. You don't have to use it, nor do you have to keep a balance. I've had several people in my office just today that thought they had to keep a balance. No, that costs you money. Don't keep a balance on a credit card, but do get one. Okay? All right. Why should I develop positive credit history? Why is that important, Riker? Why is that important? Uh, it's important for several reasons, guys. I don't talk too long, but uh, like we talked about at the beginning, you know, get <laughs> loans, um, school loans. Uh, you want to have positive credit history. Independence is a big one. Um, relying on mom, dad, you know, whatever it is, um, aunt, uncle. You know, it, it just makes you independent, and it's easy to do. It yeah. really is. Um, a lot of things, a lot of things, okay. a lot of things, so a lot of, uh, a lot of things that you'll do in life do depend on what kind of credit history do you have, okay? Uh, employers will check your credit. Does anybody have a job here? Anybody handle money? If you handle money, if you're a cash register, if you uh, work a cash register, if you handle people's personal information, your credit was probably checked. The better your credit is, the more likely you're going to be able to get a job in those jobs. they got to make sure that you have good credit. You can't just handle money. They think, oh gosh, you know, if you don't have good credit, what are you going to do with that money? So employers care about that. They also, landlords care about that. If you found yourself having to put down two and three months deposit on your rent, you may not have a credit history. If you find your mom having to co-sign, your dad having to co-sign, you probably don't have any credit history. It's something you need to think about. Insurance companies. If you have a car and you need to insure your car, if you don't have any credit, you're going to pay a higher premium. Once you get credit, you should actually go back to your insurance company and say, hey, I got good credit now, so you need to lower my premium. If you haven't done that, do that. If you've actually developed credit history in the last couple of years and you're paying a high premium, go back to your insurance company and say, hey, check my credit credit again. So I have really good credit, and I think you need to lower my premium. That goes for everybody, not just student athletes. Cell phones, cell phones, utilities, they're going to check your credit. If you're asked to put down a large deposit, it's because you don't have credit. So think about getting credit. It's important. So this is a kind of a boring slide, but I'm going to, I'm going to show you what I mean by credit. Okay? Does everybody know what a credit score is? Does everybody understand what that is? No. Okay. So... The credit bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, there's three different types of credit bureaus. You don't even need to remember that. What you need to remember is there's a score. You guys have seen it probably online. You've probably seen it um, on commercials. There's a really couple of really great commercials out with good theme songs um, about credit. And so your credit is anywhere from zero. If you have no credit, it's zero. You're not born with credit. You can't get it until you're 18 years old. This is zero. It goes up from there. 800 is about the top of the line, okay? Now, you're probably not going to have an 800 credit score right away. That takes a couple of things. 35%, the most important thing, comes to pay your bills on time. That's probably intuitive. So you have to make sure you're paying your bills on time. Capacity, 30% of it has to do with how much you owe. So if you do have a credit card and you've maxed it out, that's 30% low, not high. So you want to make sure that you keep your balances under 50%. If you have a $1,000 credit card, if you have a student credit card, you don't want to spend more than 50%. That's $500, right? So keep your balances below 50%. 15% has to do with length of credit history. Well, if you're 19 years old and you just got a card, you probably don't have a lot of credit history. That will come. That takes time. Another, the other 20% has to do with new credit and types of credit used. So are you going out every day and getting a credit card? Or are you maintaining that and only getting the card you want? Also types of credit. Do you have all student loans? Do you have any credit cards? Do you have a car loan? You want to have a good mix of credit. Does that make a little more sense to you? Right? Credit score? Yeah? A big one on this, guys, is, is uh, credit union. You know, if you're a member or not, come in. We'll pull your credit report for free. We'll review it with you, good or bad. And then, you know, I've run into a lot of people where, you know, they're just, they don't know what the credit score is because they're too scared to look. But the reality is, is that good or bad, it, 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 it is there and it does affect you. So stop by, we'll pull it, we'll go through it, we'll give you the tools you need um, to 
to bring that up if it's, if it's down or if it's not there. So. And you don't have to be a credit union member for that. We do free credit consultations. Yes, sir. Oh, what's the highest credit you can have and what's a good credit score? Uh, about the highest credit you can have is about 800. They say about 850. I don't usually see people under the age of 65 in the 800s, I'll be honest with you. Um, so where your credit usually starts after you start your credit usually is about 650. Uh, a good credit score, we really like to see around 710. It takes a while. It doesn't happen right away. But you can get it started. Good question. Yes, sir? Well, you guys for the credit, would it take a year on your parents to know? Like, it, that's a great question. Thanks, Xavier. I appreciate it. Um, so when we pull credit on you, or when we retrieve it, um, first off, if you have zero credit, no. <laughs> because you're at zero, right? So if you don't have any credit whatsoever, no, it doesn't affect you. I will tell you that it can change your credit score slightly, about four points. All right? Four points doesn't amount to anything. Okay, that won't hurt you. All right, now, if I pull your credit score, and then you go to Macy's and get a credit card there, and they pull your credit score, and you go to Marshall's, and they pull your credit score, and you go to Boston's store, and they pull your credit score, and you go four other places, that four points turns into 40 points. So that's where you have to be careful. Does that answer your question, sir? Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Very good ones. Very good questions. Thank you. Oh. One other thing, annualcreditreport.com, that's where you can check your credit report for free every single year. So if you have credit, you do want to check it. You want to make sure that no one's helped themselves to your credit, okay? There's a lot of fraud out there. So if you check it, you can make sure, and we can actually uh, help you. If you are experiencing some problems, we can help you with it, okay? Um, there's always room to grow with that. <laughs> I need a volunteer. I'll give you something. <laughs> let, let, let's try another person because I only I have two of the same things. Yes, sir. What's your name, sir? <laughs> you get the next one, sir. Jeremiah. 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 Thank you, Jeremiah. And keep in mind these are these are kind of meant to trick you. Um, if you paid more in the than the minimum balance last month on your credit card, is it okay to skip the next month? No. No! Right on. It's not okay. Ideally, you want to pay your credit cards all off, right? Because why pay the bank money? Okay? We don't want to make money off you. We'll make money off you later when you get car loans and home loans. Alright? So, the best thing to do is pay it all off. However, you can't skip a payment. Because your agreement says, I promise to pay every single month. So, if you don't pay every single month, then what your bank will do, or the credit card people will do, is go and say, he didn't pay, he did not pay, and it makes his credit score go down. So make sure that you pay every single month. If you have to set up automatic payments, that's a beautiful thing. Do you have any automatic payments, Riker? Yes, I do. I do. So set those up if you need to, okay? Great questions. Any questions about that? All right. So, what I would say about credit is, make payments on time. Make payments every month if you owe. Uh, take care of your utility bills, your cell phone bills, because we know they can't help you, but what can they do? Hurt you. Hurt you. Absolutely. Say under your credit limits, at least 50%, okay? Um, be selective about which card you use. Don't go and buy a bunch of them at one time, but we do want you to get a couple. It doesn't hurt you to get a couple. Get yourself something nice. Treat yourself. <laughs> All right? All right. Okay, look. I'm going to help you guys out with this one. All right? We're going to do we're going to answer this as a team. All right? A Federal Reserve, which is the Fed, which is the people that know a lot about money. Federal Reserve study found what person of credit reports had errors because of false delinquencies or accounts that did not belong to the consumer. Who says A? B? C, D. The bees have it. 79%, guys. 79%. Seven out of ten people that come in my office on a daily basis, something is wrong with their credit report. So I'm an, I'm, a, I'm an identical twin. My sister has the same birthday. She used to have the same last name. And we're two social security numbers apart. They're flipped, actually. So when I went to get a credit card... They said, ma'am, you've been late on your uh, phone payment, and uh, you have, like, 12 other cards. Like, what? What me? 
It was my sister. <laughs> so, I wouldn't have found out about that. Yeah, and she was like late on a cell phone bill. So I wouldn't have found out about that if I hadn't checked my credit. If someone hadn't have gone through and said, hey lady, do you know you have all this stuff? I'm like, no I didn't. So remember that, uh, yeah, that uh, web address that I gave, annualcreditreport.com? I had to go there and fix it. I had to fix it because no one else does it. You are responsible for your own credit. But if it's wrong, you're also entitled to a proper credit report. If you find that you see errors, if you find that someone stole your credit, if you find that your Debbie twin sister is on your credit report, you better tell somebody. Okay? Does anybody have questions about that? Because that's super important. Seven out of ten people I see every day has something wrong. Questions? Are you going to ask me about my twin sister? No, no. no, okay, I'm kidding. Go ahead. Uh, how do you prove it? Like, what do you, what do you put on the... Uh, that's a great question. So what you do is you're going to go, and we can help you with it, but what you do is you go to the credit bureaus, because they, because... They weren't trying to stick me with my sister's debt, okay? But the people that were reporting my sister's information were reporting it incorrectly. So all I had to do was say, so find the application that I signed. Where did I find it? Show me. If they can't do it, you got to take it off. So if they can't prove that you actually signed up for that card or actually did that loan, they have to take it off. How long, it, how long do they take to get back to you? It takes about 45 days. Yep. You can do it via mail, you can be it via phone, which I don't recommend because you don't have any proof. You're talking about proof, phone. But you can do it by certified mail, and you can also do it by internet, which is what I recommend. If anyone has problems with that, if you have problems or anybody that you know does, please come to us because we can help you. It's, it's very serious. Thanks for that. Other questions? Thank you. All right. Identity theft. This is so yucky. We see this all the time at the credit union. All right. Luckily, all of our credit cards and our debit cards are protected. All right. They're all protected. If someone steals your identity, identity or somebody steals your information, we can get your money back. How did they steal it? You ever had anything you might steal your information? Never experienced that. Never. Me twice, so I can tell you all about it. So, what they do, they do old school stuff. Dumpster diving, you know the whole hippie Christmas downtown? Hello! That's all the information they're rifling through those people's, that, those people's mail, those people's trash. Uh, mail theft, you know when you put your mail, you know, I, I don't really do this, I send everything electronically, but you know, I know people that will put mail in the mailbox and they flip that lid up, that little, little flag, it's like, come steal me! I have all this information in my mailbox that you can come and get. That's what they do. You can actually wash a check. Do you know that you can actually wash a check? You can wash the amount off of it? So if you're not paying your bills electronically, somebody can wash that information and write a check to themselves. Pretext calling, what that means is someone calls you and says, hey, you know what, you better give me your PIN number because we're getting ready to shut down your debit card. They act like they know you. So never, nobody will ever ask for your PIN number. No reputable company will ever ask you for that. So you can be like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to hang up and I'm going to call my credit union. So don't ever give any information out, even if they try to, because they try to freak you out. They're like, you know what, we know where you are, we know, you're a, you, know, we know you go to Madison College, we know what car you drive, and we're going to shut down your credit card. They kind of freak you out. But you have to keep calm and remember that this is just fake out. They're just trying to fake me out to get my information. All right? Pickpockets, burglars. We all like to have a little fun. Sometimes we like to go out. Sometimes we like to overserve ourselves a little bit. Make sure that you know where your wallet is. Make sure that you know where your purse is. Okay? If you are getting a little sideways, ask a friend to help you. Okay? Because you're a victim. Oh, what? I know. I know you guys have never done that. I know. But make sure. It's good to say, hey, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm kind of feeling a little sideways here. Riker, you want to keep my wallet? You want to keep my purse? He loves holding my purse. Okay, high tech methods. This is what we see more often than not, okay? More often than not, we see computer hackers, okay? Anybody have their computer hacked? Anybody in this room? I know you have. That's my boss. Anybody? All right, you're lucky. Because that is the serious, probably the biggest way people have their information stolen because you have that autofill. 
what fills your information in, fills your password in, especially when you go online and check your balances, fills it in for you. The hacker has all of that information. I don't recommend putting any of that in the computer. Email scams. They send you an email. They make you think that you're their client. They make you think that they're actually going to get the information. I'm going to tell you something right now. Most people say, you know what, I would never fall for that. But we see it happen all the time. Anytime you have a question about it, call your bank, call your credit union, call your credit card company first. Because it's easier to say, no thanks, than to get your money back later on. It'll, 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 it'll be easier that way. So call somebody who knows. Um, phishing. Does everybody know what phishing is? It's basically where they send you an email, they cast out this big, large net, and try to drag in all the fish they can, right? So they say, so they send a mass email to Madison College athletes. And they say, oh, your UW credit union account's been compromised. Well, how many here did we say had a UW credit union account? How many was it? There were several of you, right? So, but, this person doesn't have a UW credit union account. She got the same email. She's going to delete it because she knows that has nothing to do with her. But you might not delete it if you remember. You may say, oh my gosh. So they're trying, to, they're trying to get as much information as possible. They're trying to fish you out of the water to see if you can actually uh, get some information from you. So be careful about that. And then sell of information databases. That happens all the time. You guys get stuff in the mail? Do you get stuff in the mail? Do you get offers for credit cards in the mail? That means your information has been sold to somebody. That's why you're getting that in the mail. It's not because they think you're great. <laughs> you're great. But they don't, it's not because of that. It's because your information has been sold. So those people are going to act like they know who you are and they know what you want. And they don't. So make sure you don't fall for any of this. This is all, all ways that your information can be stolen. Anybody have a roommate in here? Do you keep your stuff locked up? Now, I'm not saying your roommate's bad. She might be sitting next to you, right? I'm not saying anything about your roommate, but what about your roommate's friend? What about your roommate's boyfriend? What about your roommate's girlfriend? Do you know them? Does your roommate ever have a party and you don't know everybody there? Does that ever happen? It's a great way to mingle, by the way. But it's also a great way to have your information stolen. So make sure that if you're having a big party, you lock your stuff up. Okay? Keep good people honest. All right? Don't give anybody that ability to say, you know, God, I really could use to take that money or I could really use to take that credit card because I have bills to pay. We all have bills to pay. So keep your information safe. And if you walk away with anything today, please do that. Okay? Think about that. All right. There's a couple of scams. Anybody, uh, anybody in here win the Canadian lottery? I won it like four times. Can't believe everybody in here won it. Okay. Did I, did I, did I buy a ticket for the Canadian lottery? No. So do you think I really won it? No. I didn't really win it. You didn't either. Trust me. So don't respond to those sort of things. We all need money. It'd be great if we did, but we didn't. All right? Cashier's checks for more than a request amount. Does anybody, has anybody bought off of eBay or Craigslist? You guys know how to do that? Never done that before? If someone offers you, somebody might say, hey, you know, I really want to buy that bicycle that you're selling. Gosh, you're selling it for $100. It's such a good deal. You know what? I'm sending you $300 just for your trouble. If you do me a favor, send me back $100. You can keep the, other, the extra $100, and we'll call it good. If anyone asks you to do that, you tell them, no, I need the exact amount that I asked for. Because most of the time, someone's not going to give you more money than you're asking for. Right? So if someone tries to give you more than you asked for, and want, they want a little bit of money back, that is a red flag. Okay? So if they say, hey, Western Union that back to me. You can go to Western Union. You can send that to me. But once, that's, once, that, once that money is gone, it's gone. Okay? You can't get that back. So make sure that you know who you're buying from or you feel like you do, at least, and it's the, the right amount of money. Okay? You want the lottery, postal money orders, they're super, super easy. The, the, the postal money orders are easy to counterfeit because who knows what a postal money order looks like in here? Anybody? Maybe one or two? There's a lot of colors on them. They're super pretty. Then they're easy to counterfeit because you don't know what that looks like. So if you don't know what that looks like, how do you know if it's counterfeit? We don't even know. Riker's a teller. He's one of the best ones we got. He doesn't always know. And I don't either. And so they expect you not to. We're professionals, right? Wire transfers from Western Union. Once that money's gone, it's gone. So keep that in mind. Your account is your responsibility. If you put money in your account, you put a check in your account, 
and it's not any good, what happens? Does anybody know what happens? Can somebody help me out? Has anybody deposited a check that didn't that came back to them? What happened? Overcharged. You do, yeah, you get an overcharge. But what happens? Why is it overcharged? Did they take the money back out of your account? Yeah. So if I put a, a check from Riker, he didn't have the he didn't have the money, which he always has the money, so I'm not worried about it. But if I put a check on my account to Riker, he writes me a hundred dollar check, and it comes back that he doesn't have the money. The credit union's going to take hundred dollars right back out of my account. Well, maybe that's all I have in my account. So then I'm overdrafted, to your point, and now I'm out hundred dollars. Your account is your responsibility, and we don't know. I don't know that Riker's not, you know, got a lot of money because I thought he did. He seemed like he did. I thought that the check was going to be good. So make sure that you know who's giving you that money because that is your responsibility. Your account's your responsibility. So if you put money in that account, make sure it's good. Or try to anyway. Try to know who you're talking to. Know who you're dealing with. Cash is king, right? So here's a few things you can do. I've already kind of gone through this, so I'm not going to go through this entire slide. But do limit what, limit what cards you carry, all right? One of the things that you see a lot, whether it has to do with student aid, has to do with a lot of stuff, um, you know, you have to put in your social security number. Does everybody have their social security memorized? Yeah? All right. Do you carry it in your wallet? Don't. What are you afraid of? You're going to accidentally retire? Walk down the street? Oh my god, I need my social security card. And that, that's never going to happen. I promise. I wish it would. I promise. You don't need to carry that information, okay? I have an Ikea card. Does anybody know what Ikea is? Anybody? No? Okay. It's a really big store where I spend a lot of money. But luckily, there's not one here in Madison. So I don't need to carry that card in my wallet. At all! Alright? So if you have cards in your wallet that you don't use on a daily basis, that you know you're not going to use, don't carry them. Because someone could just steal them out of your wallet. They could fall out of your wallet. You might not even miss them because you don't carry them around or you don't use them every day. So don't carry those. Don't share your pins or passwords. Be, be aware. Just keep, be aware. Review your credit report. Um, sign all your debit and credit cards. A lot of people say, I don't want to sign my card. I want to put CID. That's okay. But if you don't sign your credit and debit cards, someone can pick it up and they write their signature on it. And when they go and buy something, the signature matches what's on the back of your card. So if, if for any reason, make sure you put something on the back of that card so that someone doesn't come along and do their own signature, and now they all match and they got what they needed. That'll be hard to prove. All right? And don't loan your debit card to anyone. I think it's really sweet. A lot of people, especially here at the college, especially athletes here, um, you guys do understand each other. You guys spend a lot of time together. You are a team, and you are like a family. And so I know that you want to help each other out. Do that. If you do that, do that with cash. Don't loan your debit card to anybody. We can't be responsible for it. We can't help you if, if something happens and that money, some money gets stolen or the card gets lost. We can't help you if you've already compromised that card. So it's good that you help each other. But please think about the consequences before you do it. So, is everybody going to go home tonight and make a budget? Okay. That's okay, I'll take it. Alright, so, so go home, take a look at your budget, take a look at your expenses. When you get, when you get that check from Madison College Bursar's office, when you get that check in the mail, think about where that money's going. Yes, of course it's going to pay for your classes, of course it's going to pay for your books, but if you're getting extra financial aid, where is that money going to go? We don't think about it later. When my bill comes in the mail, I don't think about it later, I, or I don't think about it right now. I had to think about it earlier. I had to think about it a couple of months ago. So please take a look at that. Think about that. Think about that path for your money. Maybe you fill out this form. Fill out this sheet a little bit. Think about it. I think it will help you, and I think you'll be happy with it. Use the tools that Xavier uses. Use the tools that Riker uses. Those are available to you and often free. So use those tools. Build your credit. Build your credit. Get you a credit card if you don't already have one. All right? Come see us at UW Credit Union. I'd love it if everybody came to see us at UW Credit Union. Or go to your bank. Or go to who you use. Or go to your mom and dad and say, Mom, Dad, it's time for my credit to start. It's time for me to start building credit. And then protect your information.
Yeah, thanks for coming, guys. Uh, all this stuff, I mean, just get a plan for yourself. Get a plan, develop that plan, um, set goals. Um, come see us. Come see us if you have any questions. Uh, we're here to help. And, uh, okay. You're not alone. We're here. The whole reason why we come here today, the credit union does want to improve your financial well-being. The reason why we spent time out of our night today and you spent time out of yours is so that we can learn a little bit of how you can improve your financial well-being and you can improve your life that way. And so please come see us if you have questions. You do not have to be a member of the credit union to ask us questions. You're not alone. This information we give to everyone. Um, we give this to faculty. We give this to staff. We tell this to everyone, and you guys get to learn it now and not when you're 30 or 40 years old when the faculty and staff learn it, right? So you guys have, um, you have these tools early in life, so you can use them to your advantage. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it.